Okay, so I'd like to do a little more with Flux. Flux is important. You'll get to use Flux a lot. And so I think, you know, some of the simpler ones are fine, but we do need to do something with a moving uh, direct, normal direction. And so that's, that's what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to look at something with a moving normal direction. So what I want to do is I want to look at a um, paraboloid in this format. Now, you say, why are you doing it this way? It's because it's sort of the thing that he does in the book, and it's because, you know, I can't think of a really good physical situation that doesn't end up, uh, I can't think of a good physical situation that doesn't end up being incredibly complicated. So I want to try to do something not too complicated. Um, so I have this X, Y, Z. So I'm given this thing and I want to find the flux through it of a um, velocity field uh, that is going to be something like X minus Y F zero over two. Uh, basically, this is a sort of circulating thing, right? Or it's not circulating, it's actually just going to be pointing this way. X, X minus Y, so it's going sort of this way. Right, the velocity field is going this way, it's going through this thing, some of it actually hits through this um, surface. I want to figure out how much is going actually of, the, of that flow is going through this surface. Okay, so that's that's what we're trying to figure out. So we're given uh, the paraboloid. Okay, and so when it hits down here, it has a radius of h. So we have just sort of a circle looking thing there. And then it reduces as it goes up there better be an H here so we keep our units the same. So each one of these has units of, meter, of, of meters, has um, dimension of length. So we have length squared, length squared, length squared, length squared. That's dimensionally homogeneous. We're good. Um, now, I know you don't like it when I have um, dimensional homogeneity. Um, well, you don't like it when I talk about stuff like that, but it's really, really important right? I'm, I don't want F0, I want V0. Um, I don't care about the field, I want it to be a velocity, right? So I've got this velocity field V0, X minus Y over the square root of 2. So this is all a, un, this is all unitary. And so we have, I have a simple velocity function, I'm going to have a complicated surface normal, right? So what do we want to do? Well, first, oh well, and I want to find the flux. Somewhere I've got another flux thing that's going to do it in parts. So if you have like a cube or something, so you'll get that in another video. And this one, I just want to go through this thing with the funny looking normal. Um, just because, you know, you have to do that from time to time. So we need to find the surface normal. And unfortunately, for this case, we need it to be unit unitary, right? So in a couple of in a couple of places previously, I didn't have to use a unitary normal, right? I could just use um, I, I could just use any old vector in that direction, and I, and whatever I did would be fine. In this case, we need to we need to scale it to um, one, so that it's so that its um, size is always one. I mean, that's not the world's most com difficult thing, it's just, you know, it's one more thing and it makes things look a little worse. Um, but it's not really that important. We can um, do all sorts of things with it. So, uh, when we try to do this, what do we have? Well, what we want to do is we just want to get all these X's and Y's and Z's in the same place. We can get this whole thing equal to zero, so we could do H squared, minus x squared minus y squared minus hz, right? And uh, then we take the gradient here. 
So the gradient is going to be the, in the x direction, it's going to be the x derivative of this thing, which is minus 2x, right? Um, and plus the, in the y direction, it's going to be um, minus 2y, right? And plus in the z direction, it's going to be minus h, which, is, which will be a constant. Oh, we can live with that. Um, and the size of this normal is going to be equal to, what kind of room do I have? Not, not too bad. It's going to be equal to 8 squared plus 4x squared plus y squared. All right. Units are still okay, right? Um, so that's, that's perfectly fine. We can pull out that annoying little h, right? And we can just do h times um, the square root of 1 plus 4 over h times x squared plus y squared uh, to the 1 half. And that'll probably do us quite well. Uh, this is also going to be the surface element size. So that means that I can just write n as n over the absolute value of n, and we'll be fine. Um, so like I said, we now need to find the size of the surface element. All right, and so what is the size of the surface element? Well, the size of the surface element uh, was this thing, the square root of 1 plus, uh, what was it, uh, dz dx squared plus dz dy squared. All right. Uh, which means I have to divide this whole thing by h before I do that um, derivative. So I end up with uh, 2x, I have 2x squared um, over h squared. Right. So let's see, how does this work? So 2x squared over h squared, so 1 plus... Oh, this is 4 over h squared up here, so I'm saved. All right. Squared plus y squared. Ah, look at that. See how close those, those two things are? So uh, we can just rewrite this as n over h times s. And then we'll be able to cancel out those s's and everything will be hunky-dory. Don't you like planning ahead? Planning ahead is good. Um, by now, you should have noticed this, right? You should have done enough of these problems by the time we got here that you should have noticed how often this um, denominator and this surface element size are related, and they just cancel each other out in most of these problems. And so, uh, you know, that's awesome. And you can plan for that, but it's probably better at this stage to just make sure that it's true by, by doing all this stuff. It's not really necessary most of the time, but it might help you out later on, right? So let's just live with it for now and not get, not get too fancy, right? We don't want to get really, really fancy at this point uh, because we are not yet as amazing as we will be, right? All right, so we want to set up the integral. All right. So that means we want to integrate over this surface, right? And um, that's going to be of f dot ds, right? Or v. I called him v. No, what I did? What did I call him? Oh yeah, it's v. All right. Someday I'm going to remember what I'm doing. All right, so. And that's going to take a, that's going, that means we're going to have to um, integrate for r times uh, v dot n hat 
um, DS. Um, and that goes to our integral. All right, so we want to integrate over this entire thing. Um, so let's see, we have to integrate uh, from zero to um, five, no, no five, why do I say five? Zero to H, right? So this is this has a radius of H. So we have to integrate from zero to H in one direction. And I guess that's the X direction. So we have to integrate from zero to um, what would it be? H squared minus Y squared, X squared, excuse me, in this direction. I did make, uh, I of course made um, changes uh, between these sort of things, so you know that now I have to think about things. I'm not supposed to think about things, but you know that that's what they tell me at work is stop thinking about things, Jim. That's a bad habit. All right, so minus 2x minus x hat minus 2y y hat um, minus h z hat um, and we divide that by hs that's multiplied by s and we do dy dx so because we've written this in this form here we're using this instead of doing a um, more complicated interval um, the s is cancel so we have some constants that come out right so let's see what sort of constants come out. We have this V naught, square root of 2, and the H. Alright, so these guys come out. Um, when we do this dot product, there is no Z component, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, so we only have minus 2's here, so that's awesome. So we can put a minus 2 out here as well. And um, then we have stuff that just stays in there I guess so we'll just have to deal with it 0 to h 0 square root h squared minus x squared okay so who do I have I have x pulled out a minus 2 so I just have x times x so we have x there and we have uh, minus y okay that seems um, completely normal to me, or I mean, it's at least viable. We can live with that. And then we have a dy dx. All right. All right. So that means we have minus the square root of two v naught over h. Um, integral from zero to h. Let's see. If we integrate x with respect to y, we don't get anything. So we have just x times the square root of h squared minus x squared. We can live with that. That doesn't look horrible. And then we subtract um, one half y squared. So we have one half h squared minus or plus one half y squared. All right. Or x squared, excuse me, dx. All right, good, good, good. So most of these look marginally um, integrable, right? We think we can probably do that. Uh, let's see, which of these is easiest? Well, this guy's the easiest, so we'll start with him. So we have minus two, square root of two v naught over h. Um, and then we have a minus one half h cubed. We're good with that. And we have a plus, this goes to cube one sixth h cubed. All right, so those guys will um, talk to each other and give us a give us a reasonable number. 
This guy is a little harder. Um, let's see, what do we have to do for this guy? Uh, well, maybe we need to take um, eta equal to h squared minus x squared, right? And if we do that, then we have to say, okay, well, d eta is equal to minus uh, 2x dx, right? So dx is equal to um, minus 1 over 2x d eta, right? So we have to, we still have integrations over here. Do I want to do that over there or do I, yeah, I don't have to do that over there. I can do it right over here. All right, so I just need to do this integral from zero to h, but now I'm using eta. So if I do the integral from zero to h, that's zero in here, which means we have h squared. And uh, then we have h here to zero. Um, then we have uh, x dx, right, x dx over um, minus 2x there. We'll get the d8 in a second. Uh, well, actually, we don't have the dx. The x is minus 2x. Good, so we can cancel that guy out. Um, and this guy just ends up being the square root of eta, right? And the d eta we have. So, we'll, I think that's okay, right? So that means that, let's see, d, 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 did I get everybody? I got everybody, all right. So that means that integral is um, eta to three halves, we have a minus sign, so we have minus one half, that minus, we have one half, go up to three halves, that, we have one over that, that's two thirds, so that's one third, and then we have um, eta to the three halves is left over, um, so we have h cubed. All right, so, so that becomes, was that negative or positive up here? That was positive, so that goes back to positive, and everything's hunky-dory, so we have a plus one-third h cubed here. And you're saying, that looks interesting, man. It does look interesting because this is going to be minus one-third h cubed, right? So these two guys cancel. Now, you should have figured out that this flux was going to be zero right away. Now, why should that be? Well, look at how, look at the way these, this, um, the direction of the flow. So the direction of the flow, any place that it's going to come in over here, it's going to come out over there with exactly the same magnitude. So you should have already known just by looking at this, what I was going to do to you. All right, I'm going to have it come out to zero. but. You know, we don't always um, think that far ahead. The symmetry of the situation said it was going to be zero, and it ends up being zero, and so forth and so on. So, I mean, if you want to, why don't you try putting the um, velocity field going exactly that way? Now it's not going to um, cancel out, and then you can um, find something else. You can figure out how, you can see what it looks like as far as a number is concerned. But you just do everything exactly the same way that I've done it here, and you'll be perfectly fine, all right? Well, well, thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.